He's in line for an England call-up next week when the squad's announced. Um, have you spoken to Gareth Southgate at all and just how impressed have you been with his performances so far this season? I haven't spoke to Gareth, no. But uh, since I've come in here from the first day, I've been so impressed by James E. Um, firstly, as a player, he's he's got such a real great football brain. You know, he's a, um, obviously technically he's at a really, really high level. You know, the, the, everyone sees the chances he creates, but how he finds space and and then can manipulate the ball and, and obviously create opportunities for other other players. Tactically, he's improving all the time in the game. Um, he actually loves football, which helps. You know, he thinks about the game, he talks about the game, um, he loves playing the game, he loves training, and. Uh, You've seen his performance last week where he was absolutely outstanding, uh, both with and without the ball. So he's a very talented player, but he's also a really, really good guy as well. For someone so young, he's got real maturity. Uh, he's very much a team player, plays with great spirit, and uh, now he's a real joy to work with. And Islam Samani has gone out on loan to Monaco this yeah. week. Why didn't he feature in your plans for this season? I just think that uh, Islam's at the, the age where he'll want to play. Uh, came back in obviously from the African nations and uh, we had a long chat very cordial and, and no, no problems but he uh, uh, obviously he wants to, the opportunity to play you know he's 29 years of age and um, and obviously we've got other players in the position that can cover so, uh, so it made sense for both for him to go and get games and someone who spent the second half of last season on loan at Monaco was Adrian Silva. We know the window's still open throughout Europe. Has there been any interest in him from abroad? There has been, yeah. And I think there will be for, for a few of our players that uh, maybe want that opportunity to go out and play. So, um, so yeah, there's, there's been interest in, in Adrian and one or two of the other guys. And um, Sian has been so impressive this yeah. season so far. Um, some massive boots to fill of Harry Maguire. How impressed have you been with him? Very, very. Again, another player that I was impressed with when I came in. It's only really when you work closely with them that you, you see his real qualities. But um, but it's been really refreshing for him to come into the team. Uh, big boots to fill with Harry going. And um, however he's come in and, and he's been very, very good in both games. For the modern day centre half, he's, he's what you would want. He, he firstly wants to defend. He's aggressive in the air. He wants to defend forward. Uh, Physically, he's got good strength. He's quick, covers the ground really well, and he can play. You know, so uh, so yeah, he, he started the first two games very well, and um, yeah, it's just now about consistently uh, keeping that focus and concentration for the rest of the season. And have you seen much of Harry Maguire? What have you made to his start at Manchester United? He's been unsurprisingly very, very good. <laughs> he's he's a top class centre half. So happy for him, you know. He, he was he was great in my time here. Um, he had the opportunity to move to to a great club in Manchester United, and uh, and he's gone in there, and you can see the real difference he's made. He's given them real stability, um, settles everything down because he's very calm, but he's very imposing, Harry. And uh, now in, in both of the games, uh, I've seen the, the the Chelsea game, and he was exceptional in that. And. Uh, and of course, the other night he was he was very calm and, and he's a top class player. And and not only that, I think the Manchester United people will, will find a really really good guy as well. He's very grounded. He's very humble. And uh, yeah, they, they got a, a top class player. And just reflecting on your game against Chelsea, mm. uh, a really good second half performance. Does that give you the belief that you can break into the top six this season? Well, sure, it certainly gives us the belief that we can compete. I think for us, it's just a case of a continuity you now from that final hour of the game. The first 20, 25 minutes, you, you can expect there was there was pressure, you know, with Frank coming back and there was great momentum in the stadium uh, for Chelsea. And uh, we had to dig deep and, and show our real resilience and spirit and uh, a couple of good, really top-class defensive blocks. But once we got over that first 25 minutes, our mobility and uh, and technical quality in the game and, and hunger in our pressing and, and the chances we created was very much there for that final hour. So it's, it's a long season, but we just want to continue and uh, we hopefully can take that into the next game. And just your thoughts on uh, Wilfred and Didi, because a bit of an uncharacteristic error led to Chelsea's first goal, but then it seemed to really galvanise him and then he came back and, and scored the equaliser. Yeah, like I said, it, it was something at the time, it, it was just unfortunate. You know, young Mason Mount has pressed the game quite well. Um, 
but it, it's how you respond to that. You know, some players, you know, can um, can sort of just uh, go on and not have the best of games. But from that, there you see these teammates were around them. We'll all make mistakes, you know, on and off the pitch, and uh, it was just unfortunate. I asked the guys to play that way, which is why I said after the game, it's it's important that I assume that responsibility. We've had very, very few, if any, mistakes like that. But when it happens, it's OK. We just learned from it and he went on and had a very, very good game. And is there any update on Ben Chilwell? Do you think he'll be fit for England in a couple of weeks' time? I'm not so much worried about England. <laughs> I'm more worried about Leicester. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, Ben's had an injection last week. He'll join in the, the training. We'll see how he is for the weekend. Uh, but more than likely going to be uh, uh, be ready for next uh, next week for Leicester. And, and lastly, Sheffield United up next. They got their first Premier League win last mm. weekend against Crystal Palace. What are you expecting this weekend? Well, a very tough game. I've been very impressed by them watching them in the Championship. I think Chris has done an amazing job there. Um, I remember going to, to Sheffield United a few years back when they lost out. When my son was playing for Swindon and they, they lost out in, the, in a playoff game in League One. Um, Swindon went through to the final that... Uh, that year and uh, and now a few years later they're back in in the Premier League uh, so I think he's done a, a fantastic job um, in the promotions they've had from League One to the Championship and, and now they come in they, they remind me a little bit of the Swansea team that, that we took to the Premier League in terms of mostly guys that have played at the lower level that have fought their way through uh, they have quality they have spirit they have a real togetherness uh, and you see that and how they play. They had a good result in their first game and then they, the, the home is going to be important for them and they got that result where they won 1-0. So, uh, so yeah, so we'll, we'll expect a very, very tough game and um, but we'll be ready for that. Thank you. Hi, Brendan. Just Hi. a couple from me. Um, early days in the season, how happy are you with how it's gone so far just a couple of games in? Well, yeah, well, we've been satisfied. There's obviously elements that we'll always want to improve on but I think early on in the season what you're trying to do is build a real base from a defensive perspective and against Wolves we didn't give so much away and apart from the, the, the opening period of the game against Chelsea we uh, we uh, we showed that we were defensively strong and that we're going to go on and create chances and I, I expect us to get better as the season goes on so, uh, so we've created a good base to start with you know we want to you know, go into our next game now and, and look to get our first three points. And uh, but like I say, I, I've been pleased with uh, parts of the games in, in both games. And now it's just a case of uh, continuing with how we, like I say, how we played against Chelsea for the final hour and, and take that into our next game. Is it quite challenging as a manager? You know, the changes over the summer, new faces, people have departed to kind of get up and running and get a good start to the season. It can be, but it's just it's a process, isn't it? It's one where you know you, you know, no team will be absolutely flying at this stage of the season. Um, but you're putting a lot of building box in place uh, for the season. I've been really pleased. The attitude and energy of the team has been been very good. And this will be a different type of game for us uh, against Sheffield United. But um, but now we get players that are very focused. Like I say, we've shown in our games good mobility, good speed in our game. Um, and now we just got to take our opportunities when they come, and, and that's something that we'll continue to work on. Thanks, Brendan. Hi, Brendan. Hi. You talk about focused players. Um, I wonder how impressed you are with Christian Fuchs stepping in as he did, marauding <coughs> forward down the left wing, and, and as we know, a defender's defender. It sounds like Ben Chilwell may not be fit, but would have been a difficult one for you anyway, would it not, given his performance at the bridge? But well, it was outstanding, Christian. I, I think it's what, what what was great to see from his perspective was that he got the reward for how he's been training. You know, I've spoken to Christian a lot since I've come in, and he's a really, really valuable member of our squad. And of course, he's got a top young left back that's that's been in front of him these last probably eighteen months to two years. Um, but that doesn't mean he's any less important. And how he trains every day, how he you know, he, he gives 100% every single day. So that prepares him when you can put him into a game like this here. And uh, I thought he was outstanding. Like the team in that first sort of 10, 15 minutes, he was finding his bearings and it was uh, it was tough for us. But after that, he showed his quality and he showed his power. And 
showed his pace and obviously his defensive qualities as well. So um, now he's a player I've been really impressed with. The likes of him, Wes Morgan, these guys, they're so important for, for our squad and for the mentality of the group. And when they're asked to come in, I know that they'll do a great job. Jamie Vardy's yet to get going, of course. You've already discussed chances and opportunities in, in that part of the field. Um, is a, a game away at Sheffield United as a former Wednesday boy ideal for him? I hope so. I hope so. He's, uh, he's gone close on a few occasions and it's only a matter of time. You know, he's, uh, he's a top-class operator at this level. Uh, you, you just sense the fear when he's in and running towards the goal and as long as he just keeps getting into the areas, the goals will come for, for Jamie. I've seen that since I've been here. I see it in training and, uh, and I'm sure he would like to go, go back to Sheffield and, and open his account. Talking of forward players, Iosi Perez, do you, he's arrived at the club and, and he's playing wide, but he, he played down the middle a, a bit, quite a bit for Newcastle at times. Is that right-hand berth the best position for him, do you feel? Well, yeah, well, he's actually played there a lot at his time at Newcastle. You know, when they played uh, in the system, they, he played wide in, a, uh, in their shape, in their, in their 3-4-3. So, um, yeah, he, he can play from outside he can play inside his instinct is to be in the box and you normally find that with players that whether they're central or wide they always end up in there and that was the idea for bringing him so uh, yeah, he sailed into the club very well and it's just time it's just time his goals again will come he was unfortunate I thought a couple of times in the second half of the ball breaks to him but what's important for me is that the players are getting in there and uh, and he has that instinct to get in the box to score goals and he's done that and uh and, and come the end of the season, I'm sure he'll have a, a really good goal tally. Um, with your attack-minded players, Dennis Pratt came on, you've talked about Vardy, you've talked about Perez. Do you still feel that you're looking for a formula to fit those guys in? Is there a way of getting Pratt into the, the team as well as Madison and Perez and Vardy? You seem to have an embarrassment of riches in that final third at the minute. Yeah, no, there's no there's no formula. It's just we, we it's, it's collective work that's ongoing. You know, we can never just rely on on one player. You know, we'll, we'll have different ways to play. We'll have flexibility. We've got good players on the bench to to come in. I think it's just time. It will. You know, once we get one or two goals in a game, then that gives us confidence, of course. Yeah, but also you got to remember we played two games that have been really, really tough games. You know, you, you think of ourselves, Wolves and Chelsea. The games have all been really tight, and the teams that are, are I'm sure, going to be fighting throughout the, the season at the top end. So. Um, so yeah, sometimes there's not so many chances in those games. For us, we had the chances. We didn't quite take them, but um, you know, I'm really confident in the team that as we go on and progress through the season, that uh, the opportunities will uh, we will take them. One of those players on the bench is Kelechi and Acho yet to yet to have an opportunity uh, in your side. How what's it like trying to manage that talent? And, and I know you've got tremendous faith in him because you've told us that before. Mm. What's it like managing him? Because I'm he's a striker, we're champing at the bit to to get on and be able to play. Yeah, it's it's easy to manage him. He's he's a good boy. He trains hard every day. I think he respects where he's at, uh, and within the squad, he knows that he's um, he's he's behind a top class player. And um, and if we need him, he can come in and make a contribution. Um, every Thursday night, I have the pleasure of presenting a program with Alan Birch and MBA. MBA. Um, tonight, uh, today is the Birch's birthday. Mm. You can place a bet as to which one. Uh, would you have a birthday message for the Birch, Brendan, that we'll play to him tonight? Yeah, well, I would just say to Alan, wishing him all, you know, a very, very um, happy birthday and uh, cherish every moment, I suppose. <laughs> uh, now, he's a, he's, he's a top guy. I never met him before, before I came to here. And uh, he always brings a smile to me every single day. He pops in and... Um, has a joke. Actually, you should say I haven't seen him today. So, um, I hopefully will when I go back to the training ground. But uh, no, happy birthday, Birch from us all, top man, and uh, enjoy your glass of wine later. Good luck at the weekend. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Okay, thank you.